coach, uh, obviously, uh, you know, coming off you know another solid win, you, you go to you go to Fresno, a place that's that's tough to win at. Um, just your thoughts on that team this year? Seems like you know they, they can score some points too. Well, Rodney's a great coach, and they got an explosive team, and you know a team that that uh, you know can win any game they play, and they beat San Diego State at home, and. They're, you know, they're just a really, really good basketball team with really talented players. It seems like you know the, the guards they have, they can throw a lot of them at you mm -hmm. and a lot of guys who can score. Yeah. It's not just necessarily one guy kind of carrying the load for them. So no, a lot it's of not. Options. But, you know, I would put Marvell Harris as, you know, he's an NBA prospect and a, and a guy that you know, can play at the highest level of basketball, really, really, really good player. And you know, they got a lot of other good players to go along with them. How much do you bring up uh, the game you guys played there last year? You know, I don't know. Uh, they're a lot different team. We're a lot different team. I mean, you think, you know, you, you, you think you, you would bring it up, but it, it seems like so long ago. And you know, that, that was a weird. Like Dermot got hurt that day. There's so much crazy stuff going on at that time. How are you guys? Uh, you know, you, you talked about this in your post game press conference last night. You used the word maturity a couple times, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems like kind of a perfect word to describe the way that. The guys are kind of just going about things right now. How have they been able to uh, kind of develop that? Well, when you know, that's what you hope for when you have seniors, and and that's what you're trying to develop when you get them from freshmen and have them until their senior year. And you know, they're not always perfect, but if you can have that mature professional approach, uh, that's going to help you. And you know, you always hear coaches talk about like when we were young, you just see the immature mistakes and the and the experience. And that's you know, I think what you saw against Air Force is a team that has experience and. And that's what it looks like. Two years ago, you had the approach of kind of, you know, you wanted the team to know kind of where they stood when we talk about the NCAA tournament and sure. stuff like that. And it seemed to serve you pretty well. Are you doing that again this year? No, not, not with the NCAA tournament. Uh -huh. Just the league race right now. And, you know, that, that that's probably the, our biggest focus and, and control what we can control. I mean, the league race is great and, and there's other things going on, but we can't control who wins the Wyoming and San Diego State game and all those kind of things that happen outside of us. So the only thing we can do is, is try to win the next one and you know be as good as we can be on those nights. So yeah. your, your RPI watch doesn't – the well, RPI my, is not really a big my deal. My son keeps me posted on that. So, you know, <laughs> I get daily texts from him and of where we are. So, uh, But, uh, yeah, you try to – you know, in maybe in two or three weeks, that, that might be more of a, of a uh, something that we look at. But right now, right now. You personally, though, whether you tell your team around, are you checking Joel Lenardi's bracket, or do you like to see where you get where you no, guys Matt, stand? I don't have to. Max keeps me posted on all that, so I get daily updates. It looks like based on today's bracket, you guys are literally the next team out of the tournament in his bracket. How, how's that? How's that make you feel? Well, I think that's a good spot to be in. We're in the conversation, but uh, there's a lot of work to be done, and you know, there's probably 10, 15 teams around around us so it doesn't matter now it's what you can do in the next three weeks you were mentioning after the game last night about when you guys had to play at utah in the first game after uh yeah. rick majerus had passed uh obviously when you know it's going to be a charged up energy especially i guess saturday do, do you say anything to the guys as far as there's going to be runs they're, they're going to be loud i mean do, do you make them aware of the fact that it's going to be a more juiced building maybe well, normal? well that you know we've played in some juiced buildings so that's you know i, I think that's how you have to approach it is that it's going to be as tough you know it's going to be a road game in the Mountain West, and we know how hard those are and how challenging those are and how mentally tough we have to be to compete in those atmospheres. It's the, yeah, you mentioned that, but, I mean, this, this team's been able to win about as many road games as since you've been around, you know, yeah. away from home in some tough environments. It, as far as the things you cha the teams have accomplished so far this year, how is that one of the most impressive to you, just the ability to win yeah, those games? Yeah, because those are you go into those games and, and you go into places where not many teams get out alive. and. Uh, just to see what we've done in, in, in you know, I, I got to see it close up and I was really impressed with what our guys, how they handled it. And, you know, that, and it's going to take that kind of effort uh, in this next one. Does that build on it, you know, build on itself? You know, that, you know, that, hey, this team's shown they can win at Utah, Utah State, they can win sure. at New Mexico. That, well, yeah, it you gives know. you the confidence, but it also, you know, you're, it's a new game, new, you know, you can't, you can't rely on that and you can't say, well, we got that done, so we're going to get this done. It, it's a whole different entity and, you know, if we don't play our best, if we don't play our hardest, and, and all those kind of things, then we don't get it done. I felt like I was back at a football uh, interview yesterday because the guys were saying they want to go one and zero, one and zero. We heard that a lot from the yeah. football team last year. What, I, with that being said, these two, these next two road games, are you going to find out even more about your team the, the way that now you guys are getting some? No, it's bit, just or? it is. It really is one and zero. I mean, yeah. with, with seven more to go, if you, you just got to chunk it out, and, and this is a crucial stretch right here. Uh, you know, I talked to our guys, it's the third lap of the mile, but the hardest lap to run. Uh, 
uh, and it's the true teams and the true players uh, can really, really bury guys in the third lap, and it's, but it's hard to do. Were you talking about hurdles or something a few weeks ago? Or what was yeah, it? you know, I got a lot of sports okay. analogies. I'm not just a one-trick pony. I got a, <laughs> in fact, there's no C job that I'm interested in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, uh, you look at, um, damn it, you got, you got me off the course with the uh, OC, mm -hmm. OC thing. Right. Um, on the road, I mean, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but you know, I know that the opponents vary, the, the conditions vary, and stuff like that. But are there consistencies that make it that make a road yeah, team a good yeah. road team? Yeah, and absolutely, there is consistencies, and it's that you know, again, that's where the maturity part comes in, is that you have to be mature enough to handle it, you have to be mature enough not to come apart. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've had young teams that you know through a process of playing on the road, and a lot of these guys have went through it. Is we we have had situations where we did come apart on the road, and, and that's what a lot of young teams do. So hopefully, you know, as more of a veteran team, we're better prepared for that. You were asked last night if it's more fun or how much fun you're having right now, mm -hmm. but is it at least more fun to, to show up to work when, when it's a winning streak like? Oh this? yeah, and to wake up in the morning, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, completely. Um, you don't wake up very good from losses, and, but you don't go to sleep very well. So it's been a month since uh, you've had one. Yeah, that's you know, I mean, that's uh, it. it it a lot, it's a lot better. It's a lot better. The guys are bouncing their staff, and they believe, and they like being around each other. They like seeing the staff, and they like seeing each other. And that's what winning can do for you. Do you think that at any point in time pressure might come? I mean, kind of for the last month, and when you start 0-3, you're just kind of playing for the next game. But mm -hmm. soon these games are obviously going to get bigger and bigger as, you know, maybe outside noise about the title. And yeah, the, and no, the there, there were absolutely felt no pressure until just this moment when you uh, <laughs> asked that question, and it changed everything. <laughs> You're welcome, Coach. Yeah. 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 How about, yeah, how then, about the, how Thank about... you for noticing. <laughs> yeah, the, the, some of the things that people point out to me are amazing. Like, I, I didn't know that the, uh, as far as uh, that's concerned. Like, you know, if you win tonight and then Wyoming loses, your half game, you know, yeah, we're, we're aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. and, but, you know, we don't, we don't know. We don't approach it as a pressure situation. And we, we have goals that we want to accomplish, and we're working towards those goals. And, and you know, you, you play as hard as you can, as good as you can. And if somebody's good enough to beat us on those nights, then we'll shake their hands and look them in the eye.